Hey, welcome back to Legends of Skyward Sword. In this video, we are picking up where we last left off here in this room that I mentioned uh, earlier. How it's going to be a pretty important room, but we're going to exit out of it for now. But we will be coming back at the very end of this video. As I said, it is a kind of centralized hub. Now that we have this uh, dust bellows, we are able to blow away the dust that is surrounding that. Uh, block and the dust that is uh, covering this switch that we need to step on. As you see, if you step on and stand off of it, the door will open it and then shut again, so you need to push this block on top. Now, I don't quite understand why Link could not have just dug his way through. I don't know if this, like, stuff is pretty solidified and if this gust bellows is, like, powerful as wind or something. By the way, we will be needing that to push this uh, block on. That door will now open for us, and we just need to run past this guy right here. There we go. Perfect. Alright, so here we are in this room. Let's blow this guy out of the way for now, blow him up. And, uh... There's a time shift crystal in, in this room that we will be getting to in just a second. And it will transform everything quite radically. And you'll see what I mean here momentarily. So for now we just need to run across the quicksand. Uh, make sure you take a break when you get to every platform. Otherwise you will most likely be uh, drowning in a quicksand and being taken back to your last standing location. So here we go. Let's go ahead and blow this guy out the way. Boom. Goes the puffer fish. Alright, so we can see there's a big pile of sand there, so let's blow that away to reveal the time shift crystal. Uh, we can go ahead and just uh, smack that and check out what happens. Now, we're high up in the sky. Like, that's a lot of sand. I mean, the sand was making it. That's at least like 100 feet of sand or something. I'm kind of curious on how it got in there over all those years to create just that much, but anyways, that's something that some Zelda fans can speculate on, uh, I won't be touching that on, on that in this video. So this actually took me a while to figure out, but you just spin this windmill that's on the doors and it'll lift the gate up, and you'll see a couple more of those throughout the video. It's quite creative, if you're not paying attention, you'll missed that entirely so also here's a new enemy um it's pretty much just like a robotic sentry so he has the main thing right here that shoots rockets at you but then it also has it sends out other tiny sentries as well that will follow you as you see they have that blue line just like the uh emo statues and you can just cut right through them but I'm kind of in a hurry and I don't feel like stopping to kill them but they'll pretty much just follow you until they blow up now these guys have a propeller on them if you blow them he seems to not be able to do anything so if he's getting ready to attack you you can just blow on him a little bit or you can just kill him but I'm too much of a hurry to actually stop and kill him but as you can see if you haven't been paying attention, these uh, platforms that we were walking on earlier now have a propeller that you can use the uh, the gust bellows on to blow and have it come your way, or you can stand on it and blow it to make it go wherever you need it to go. Now those things are annoying me, so I just need to get out of this room before they end up killing me or something. They'll probably end up blowing me up or something. Oh, another Beemos. All right, down. You go back up. In this uh, video, we're going to be getting the dungeon map. That's uh, about it. I'm just gonna ignore that guy. I should probably just kill these things, but I've always been a fan of not killing things, just running right past them. So I'll just quickly blow that door. He's gonna catch sight of me. And on that note, let's get out of there. I'm almost dead now, I guess. That's what I guess for being impatient. 
Was he, we're in this room with these, what are they? they remind me of Hydras. Because you can take off all their heads, otherwise they regrow. So if you don't take them all out, out at once, then all three will respawn. So, there's a couple of ways to feed them. You can just ang angle your sword slice, but I find that's a little bit harder because even when you have your slice times how it should, they just don't die. So, I'm more of a fan of the bomb method. Um, you can generally get them to blow up all the heads at once, like that. But this is also not perfect as there's a, several times where a bomb should take off all their heads, but it doesn't. Like right here, I believe. Or coming up. Takes me a couple. This doesn't take off all this heads, at least one. And often, you'll find that the head that should definitely have come off is the one that doesn't come off. But right here, there's two bombs right there in the middle of both of them. And somehow one of the heads is left alive. And then you do a spin attack with both of them or all three of his heads facing right at you and he doesn't die. So it's not a perfect method. But you can just keep trying it. We'll eventually get him like that. That was by far... I mean, it shouldn't have taken off all of his heads. It wasn't even my best attempt. But it works, so whatever the case is, we can continue on. This is the room with the dungeon map and the rest of this video will be taking place in this room for the most part. For now, we just need to push this block so we can get up to this higher level. Alright. Should be able to climb up there now. Eh, I'm a little bit off, but it looks like there's space if I get all the way to the edge. There we go. When we get up here, we will see that the... Uh, gate is a little bit blocked off but if you blow you'll see there's a time shift crystal so you can go ahead use your slingshot and smack it and that will cause this thing down here to come alive this is the uh, skyward sword version of a of the armos so what we need to do is go down there and see how we beat this guy now he's not all that hard um, just don't stand too close to him because he does do significant damage if you're too close. So all you need to do is blow at his top, which is just like the things that you use on to uh, the, the platforms that you use to travel across gaps. Use that, and then his head will open up, and he's got a crystal on both sides. One that you can just smack this one, you need to do like a thrust into, and that will pretty much be the end of him. That will open up the gate for us to continue on into the next room. And it will also open up the gate so we can get the dungeon map. And he draws a lot of hearts most of the time, so that's always nice. Come on. Alright. So let's go ahead and grab this map. We're almost done with this video. We're just going to enter in, into this next room, which is the room we started the video off on and one we ended that last video on. It's that central room that I keep mentioning. So we're going to just head right back in there and there will be a button that we can stand on which will open up the gate to make another shortcut. And that's going to be the end of this video so thank you everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe. I have plenty more Skyward Sword to send your way so thank you very much for watching again.